So today's video is all about audio and more specifically the type of equipment that I use when I'm on set. What are my go-tos? What are the pieces of kit that I rely on most to get good, clean sound? You can have the most expensive and beautiful sounding microphone, but if you're not using it properly, then uh, it's gonna sound like shit. And if you wanna check out any of the equipment that I'm talking about today, it's gonna be all linked in the description down below. If you buy using those links, then I get a small commission back to the channel, which really helps keep some of the lights on around here. All right, let's get into that video. So the first piece of audio gear I wanna talk about are recorders. Now these here are Zoom H1s. They're very popular and for good reason. These things are solid. They're quite inexpensive and they have a couple features that uh, that I think are pretty great. Now they look a little bit different, but that's just because this is the updated version. This is the H1N and this is the Zoom H1. I'm not gonna do a comparison of the two. They sound the exact same. So you can pick up one of these things for about $150 Canadian. That's not nothing, but for a recorder, that's pretty good. They are made out of plastic. You can't really expect much for the price that you're paying for these things. But I've sat on them by accident. I've dropped them on occasion and uh, they still have lived to see another day. It records to a micro SD card. You can't plug in an XLR microphone into something like this, but there's a 3.5 jack right here that you can plug in a couple different microphones to. And on the other side, you have a headphone jack. These have built-in microphones. These things get me out of a pinch all the time. They're so simple and so easy, it's really hard to screw up with these things. If you guys pick up a Zoom H1 and you use it in this way, you can expect some results that sound something like this. This isn't the most ideal environment, but we're indoors and there aren't a lot of distractions, maybe a little bit of an echo. And I have the microphone with a dead cat very close to my face. So this is what you can expect with uh, using the Zoom H1. For 90% of my audio, this was my go-to for the first year and a half of me freelancing. I've owned this guy since 2016, I think, and it still holds up today. I'm very pleased that I purchased this guy. But there's a couple of accessories that I recommend you guys investing in. Um, one of them is this thing. Uh, this is not a dead chinchilla. This is a dead cat. Uh, that sounds worse. Yeah, it's actually called a dead cat. But what it does is it just kind of protects your microphone from the wind. These microphones, they're completely exposed. They're just asking to receive all kinds of interference or interruptions by your environment. So if you're doing any recording outside, or even if you're waving this thing back and forth, this action alone will introduce all kinds of noise and bleh that we don't want. You can definitely see that this uh, dead cat helps to prevent all that. Though it does look funny and you're gonna have so many people that are gonna walk up to it and be like, oh, that's so cute. Ah. And then your audio is gonna be all screwed up. Now, the other thing that I recommend purchasing is one of these clamps. Now I use these clamps for everything. I'm using one right now to hold up a hair light. But if ever you're in a pinch and you need to record audio, say in a car or by a tree or something along those lines, you can take one of these clamps. There are so many places where you can hide a microphone like this that is near your actors so you can pick up some really good quality sound. You don't necessarily need to buy a clamp that looks exactly like this, but I do encourage you to find some sort of system and keep something in your kit, in your bag, that is able to um, just grab onto something and provide you with a quarter 20. Something else that you should invest in is a solid lavalier microphone. These things, um, they don't have to be too expensive. This one was $40. This sounds solid and this is a great option because you can walk around and not have to worry about having a crew follow you around with a boom pole or staying really close to the microphone because as you walk around, you're carrying the microphone with you. So that's something that I really like using and it's my go-to whenever I'm recording BTS stuff, like the coffee commercial. All of the audio from that, I was using this setup. So it's a very versatile system and I highly recommend that you invest in one of these. So right now I'm using this recorder plugged into a lavalier microphone that's attached to my shirt. But what I really like about this unit is that I can turn around and walk around. I can do like a dance or something like that. And I can, and the audio sounds consistent. It sounds the exact same because the microphone is following me. Wherever I go, the microphone is, and I'm not having a person with a boom pole walk around and follow me wherever I'm going. You can get this entire unit and you can get set up and uh, get started for about $200, which that is not nothing. You have to pay for the lavalier microphone and you have to pay for the recorder, but you'll have it in your arsenal forever. There's so much gear out there like lenses and cameras and computers that eventually deteriorate over time and they break. I'm not saying that these are invincible, they are made of plastic, but I've had mine for about five years now and I've been very satisfied with it. So 
take that as you will. Okay, I've talked about this thing enough. Let's move on to some other pieces of gear that I commonly use. All right, the next microphone I wanna talk about is, um... so this right here is the Rode VideoMic NTG. It's kind of a nice mix between their like really high end microphones and their consumer microphones. And I find that this guy is one of the most versatile microphones I've ever seen. I've used it as like a podcast mic. I've used this thing for online meetings, video chats. One of the things you can do is you can plug it in through USB-C and run it directly into your computer and then you're good to go. So for live streaming, this is a great setup. So this microphone costs around $350 Canadian, I think. At first I was a little bit skeptical because I've seen prices for like the Rode video mic. So I considered buying one of those instead, but this guy is a lot more versatile and you can do so many other things with it. And if instead of buying this, I bought the video mic pro plus, then I would have had to invest in a solid voiceover microphone and a USB microphone for conference calls, along with something like the Rode NTG two or three for all of my commercial shoots. So you look at this microphone and you see how much it does. And the price actually makes a lot of sense because if I didn't go with something like this and instead I had to pay for all of those other microphones, then I would be carrying so many different types of microphones that had all these different reasons for them. And it would just be a big mess. Yes, individually, they're less expensive or the same price as this, but when you add those all up together, now there is a battery in this microphone that you do have to charge, but every time I plug it into my computer to do those voiceover or conference calls or things like that, it starts charging the microphone when it's in there. I've actually never had to plug this thing in the wall. So I know we have a couple vloggers on this channel, so I wanted to show you guys kind of a realistic world test that you can expect when using these types of microphones in um, on a daily basis. This microphone I find is excellent for that run and gun vlogging style of filming. It has one of those shock absorbers on it, so all the little shakes and things that I do with my camera, so you're not hearing that nearly as um, much, and it's not as distracting compared to when you are um, just having the microphone mounted directly onto the camera. Then you hear all of those little clicks and clacks and dinks. So that's really good. So this microphone is really ideal for vlogging. Now let's talk about these guys. These are uh, one of the latest purchases I've done. These guys are wireless lavalier kits. After I filmed that coffee commercial, I had to deal with all the behind the scenes audio files as well as the video files and had to sync all those up. It wasn't that bad, it wasn't that difficult, but it, it was a little annoying. And I wanna do more videos like that but I really didn't want that to be part of my regular workflow. So I thought I would go ahead and invest in uh, some of these because I knew that these would save some time and they're quite reasonably priced. So these things go for about, uh, I think $300 Canadian. What's crazy is just how small they are. If you look right here, this is uh, the battery for the Panasonic G85. It's a pretty small battery, but like, look at this. The battery is larger than the than the wireless um, transmitter and receiver, which is really crazy. I carry batteries in my pockets all the time. And I'm sure that if you guys do any video shooting, you've done the same. So if you can carry batteries like these in your pockets, you'll have no problem finding a way of hiding this somewhere on your clothing. And these guys have a couple different features. They have a built-in microphone directly in the transmitter. If you're in a pinch and you have to get something done really quickly, um, this is this is a solid setup because it's all one contained unit. You can also use it as an interview microphone and walk around with it being used like this. I think it's one of the best lavalier systems I've seen for the price. Even the more expensive ones that are more reliable, um, they're not this size. They're like the size of my phone. It's like carrying around a walkie talkie with you. It's kind of a pain. But these little guys, these are like super slim. Like I said, the size of a battery. Like this microphone, if you look here, it's hidden inside of my belt boot. And it is snug, but it does fit. Like there's so many places that you can hide this thing that are not awkward. You don't have to give strong directions. You don't have to tell them like, okay, well, I'm gonna attach this thing to your bra strap and then have this heavy thing hanging down your underwear or bra strap or your belt. They have an internal battery, which has some pros and cons to it. I'm sure that the internal battery makes it so that it's able to stay smaller and more durable, but it is a little bit annoying having to charge them. I plug them in anytime I use them for a significant amount of time, like more than an hour 
hour, but apparently they last for up to six to eight hours, somewhere around there, depending on how you're using them. I'm still kind of figuring them out. I'm still figuring out what their strengths and weaknesses are. I've had these things for about two weeks now and I'm, I'm really liking them. I have other microphones, I have other audio gear, but these are usually my go-to because they work, they're reliable, I know them well, and I know the results I'm gonna get from them every time I use them. And that's how you need to be able to feel about your equipment. You need to feel confident and you need to know exactly what you're gonna get. No surprises, surprises are the worst. So one of the things I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a couple different setups so you can decide which one you think sounds best for your given scenario. Okay, so just to give you an idea, this is what the built-in microphone sounds like on the Panasonic G85. I actually haven't heard the built-in microphone on this camera before, but I already know what it's gonna sound like. It's gonna sound like absolute garbage. Okay, so as you can hear, that is a massive improvement because I have an external microphone attached to my camera. This is how it sounds, what my usual videos sound like. The microphone is about one uh, one of these away from my forehead-ish area. I'm very happy with the way that this microphone sounds and how it performs for its versatility and its price point and everything that I can do. I really like it. Honestly, I have purchased this thing and knowing that I wasn't gonna use it that often, knowing that it was made for very specific circumstances. This is a Minolta lens, it's adapted. It's a fully manual lens, so probably not the most ideal for gimbal work. You should have autofocus when you're using a gimbal. You can also use it as an interview microphone and walk around with it being used like this. Okay, right now I'm using the Rode Wireless Go with the Rode Wireless Go lavalier microphone. Uh, and you can hear that it sounds pretty good. I'm not getting too much interference. Ben, qu'est-ce qu'on va faire? What about camp? Well, what's your favorite part about camp? Qu'est-ce qui vous manque le plus? So I'm not moving my arms out. All I'm doing is I'm taking my back heels and I'm rolling forward and I'm using my hips. So that's my kit. It is pretty simple and there's not much to it. It's growing over time, but these three pieces of kit and their accessories have gotten me out of pretty much every scenario and have been able to help me beat every challenge that I have come across while recording audio on the go. If I could only pick one piece of gear out of all of these uh, three units, uh, that's a tough one. I think I would have to go with the Zoom recorder because it's a recorder, it has nice microphones in it so I can boom it, I've done that plenty of times, and uh, I can run that directly into the camera, so that's pretty great. And I can use it as a wireless uh, lavalier system, sort of wireless lavalier system. If I had no other option, this would be my go-to because it's such a versatile little tool. I don't know what else can do what this guy can do. So let me know in the comments down below what your favorite audio solution is. Was there a particular system that you thought delivered the best sound? What were the results that you really liked? And also leave some suggestions behind of uh, some audio equipment that you think I should check out because I'm always interested in learning more about what's out there and what will give me the best results. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you get the notifications. Do all that jazz, and I will see you next time. Take care. That kind of noise is just a scrap, blah, 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 blah. For the G85 or the Fujifilm X-T2, that was a B that just showed up there. And they're quite reasonably pli pliced. The, the, the.